we have among the recensions or the versions of the story of the Isra and the Mi'raj, one story, one recension of this epic monumental event, the Prophet alayhi salat was salam, after entering the direct presence of his Lord, is descending the heavens and he encounters Musa alayhi salam. And Musa asked him about what he received from Allah. And he explained that he had received the prayer. But that the prayers were initially 50 in number. That Muslims were responsible for completing 50 prayers every day. And Musa السلام, told the Prophet السلام, to go back to Allah to request a reduction because 50 prayers a day would be far too many for the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ to manage. And so the Prophet went back to Allah and that number was reduced to 25. And Musa said the same thing, go back. 25 is too many. The number was reduced to 10. And then finally, the number was reduced to 5. And they say that it was from the haya, from the extreme modesty, the ihtisham of the Prophet wasallam, that he could not bring himself to go back to Allah to request a further reduction. But at that point, Allah revealed to the Messenger of Allah wasallam, that the number of the prayers that your ummah is responsible for completing every day will remain five. But if they complete those five prayers on time and with khushu'ah, with reverence, I will give them the reward of 50. And at this, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam said, I wish that I could return to be among the living so that I could be from your community, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this blessing that we enjoy, being from the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa this is an extreme privilege of ours. This is an expression of God's great favor. This is something prophets and messengers, Musa was from the Ulul Azam, those possessors of great resolution, they wanted this blessing. And it's one that we get to experience on a daily basis. Now the Prophet ﷺ, speaking about himself in relation to the NBA who came before him, he said that he was given five khasa'is. He was given five special characteristics. These are the things that make his risala, his mission distinct among the missions of all of the prophets and the messengers. He said first, that the entire earth has been made a place of prayer for him. Then he mentioned tayammum, that if followers of his ummah are unable to find water, with which to purify themselves for prayer, they can use the earth. Then he mentioned the, the yeah, lahu al -ghanima, lahu al -ghanima, that the spoils of war had been made permissible for him. The spoils of war were not permissible for prophets before him. Then he mentioned the shafa'a, Intercession that the Prophet Sallallahu had been given the right of intercession. No prophet before him had been given that right. And then he mentioned, and this is the topic for today's khutbah, that every prophet before him was sent specifically to his nation. When you read the Quran, Allah, ta Allah talks about Ad. He talks about Thamud. He says, Akhahum Shu'ib. Akhahum Salih. Their brother, Shu'ib, their brother, Salih. Jesus himself, even in the gospel, says, I was only sent to reclaim the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the house of Israel. 
But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was commanded to say Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an I am the messenger of God unto all of you So the diversity that we see in our community Is a part of what makes the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam distinct and we have to recognize this not only as a gift that God has given us, but a great responsibility. How will we manage this diversity? How will we treat it? We can treat it in a way that accentuates it, highlights it. We can benefit from its blessing or we can treat it in a way that takes it for granted or worse yet, destroys it. If you look at our community, in our diversity, in the nations that we represent, the ethnicities that we represent, the cultures that we represent, the socioeconomic classes that we represent, maybe the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, has never seen a community as diverse as ours. And as one sister said to me, who works in a diversity and inclusion space, diversity is just a euphemism for conflict. Whenever people have different histories, different backgrounds, different perspectives, you can expect for there to be conflict. But this is nothing new to our community. Even among the Sahaba, Ridwan alayhim ajma'een, may God be pleased with all of them, there was some conflict. There was some difficulty. What makes them distinct in their virtue was not an absence of conflict, but how they dealt with that conflict. There's one story. Some people question its authenticity, but my tahqiq, my review of the story, and it's in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, suggests that this story is completely authentic. That Bilal ibn Rabah, radiallahu anhu, may God be pleased with him, was in some kind of contentious exchange with Abu Dhar al Ghifari, with Abu Dhar. And in a fit of anger, Abu Dhar said to him, Ya ibn al Sauda, you son of a black woman? And if you look at Ijaluni's book, Al Isaba fi Tamiyiz al Sahaba, you see all of these very vivid descriptions of the companions of the Prophet Wasallam. You learn that Abu Dhar himself was ghamik. He was dark-skinned himself. So his, his referencing Bilal's complexion might have been a reference to his former condition of enslavement. You're the son of a slave woman. How dare you speak to me like that? And Bilal went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, this man engaged in ta'anun fil ajdad. He disrespected me and he disrespected my forefathers in this criticism he made of me publicly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is something typical of his sunnah. He did not say to Bilal, be patient. He did not say, these are bad habits and perhaps they will die slowly. He said, tell Abu Dhar that I want to speak to him. And when Abu Dhar arrived to the presence of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya Abu Dhar, innaka rajulun fika shay'un min al He said, oh Abu Dhar, I noticed that you are a man that still has some of the traces of jahiliyyah in you. How dare you disrespect, in other words, how dare you disrespect this man, your brother, and his mother on account either of his complexion or his former condition of enslavement. And Abu Dhar, upon hearing this, was so broken. See, the Sahaba, Ridwan alayhim ajma'een, what makes them distinct from every other generation is they wanted kamalul iman. They wanted a complete faith. When Allah Ta'ala said, فَدْخُلُوا فِي سِلْمِ Enter into Islam completely. They wanted that. They desired that. They pursued that. So hearing the Prophet tell him, and of course it's very important to note this. 
among the Sahaba, Ridwan Alayhim Ajma'in, Abu Dhar was known for being a Zahid. He was known for his abstinence in the dunya. He was known for being an Abid. He was known for being very intense in his worship. And in spite of that, because of his attitude toward Bilal, the Prophet ﷺ informed him that his Islam had yet to be completed. And Abu Dhar went back to Bilal and sought his forgiveness. But he did not stop at simply apologizing. He said to him, Bilal, I'm going to get on the ground. And I am not going to get up until you take your foot and place it upon my head. Just to, you know, symbolize the atonement that I'm seeking in this moment. And Bilal, radiallahu anhu, in his graciousness, he said, this is not necessary. You apologized and that is enough for me. But then Abu Dhar swore I'm not getting up from this place until you put your foot on my head. And in the story, Bilal just took his foot and lightly grazed the head of Abu Dhar. And there is no indication in our sources that they had any issue after that. Why am I mentioning this? Because this is how good people, this is how people who desire virtue atone for past mistakes. The hero of this story is really Abu Dhar because he recognized that he did something wrong. He sought forgiveness for that wrong action and Bilal granted him that. We are a divided community. Our community has many divisions. Some people separate our community by immigrant and indigenous. Some people by country of origin. Some people by social economic status. We actually cannot afford any of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayuhannas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakran wa unta wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa kaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum inna Allaha alimun khabir This is an ayah all of us are familiar with. It's on the, the, the program booklet of every conference we attend. O oh, humanity, we created you from one male and one female. And we spread you intentionally into nations and tribes. For the purpose of ta'aruf, of getting to know one another. The diversity in creation and that diversity being reflected in our community is a sign of God. It's intentional. We are not supposed to be limited to that which, which, which we are familiar. We're supposed to have a healthy curiosity about people that are different than us, and it should increase us in devotion. It shouldn't increase us in narrow-mindedness. The most noble of you in the sight of God are those in possession of the greatest God consciousness. In Allah Alimun Khabir. And Allah is knowledgeable and informed about our differences. One poet, and I realize that I'm from Chicago, this analogy, it probably resonates better in Chicago than in the Bay Area. But one poet said, referencing diversity. It is better to learn to appreciate the change in seasons than to fall hopelessly in love with summer. You see? Difference, this is God's stamp in creation. Learn to appreciate difference, right? Once, a man came into the masjid of the Prophet Wasallam, withdrew to a corner and urinated. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam As the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum Jami'an Were moving to accost the man The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said No, let him finish Let him finish After the man finished The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam Looked at the magnanimity of his prophetic character He didn't even jump to a conclusion He didn't say Why would you desecrate our sacred space? He said, "Ma hamalaka bika an fabulat al masjid." What would compel you, right? Literally, what carried you to urinate in the mosque? And the man said, "I didn't know that you couldn't urinate in the mosque." Right? He was from the from the ahl from the yani from the bedu. Right? I didn't know that you couldn't urinate in the mosque. The Prophet ﷺ explained to him. That this is the masjid. It's a place of purity. We use it for prayer. We use it for remembrance. It is not suitable to be used to relieve or qada al haja to relieve ourselves. And then the Prophet ﷺ called for a sijlum min al ma, a pail of water, and he began to clean this man's urine with his own blessed hand, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Christians boast often about a story in the gospel of Jesus cleaning the feet of his disciples. And I say the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, cleaned the urine of one of his sahaba. La ilaha illallah. Then he said to the man, no, the man, upon seeing this, he turned to Allah and he said, oh Allah, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on Muhammad. Seeing this act of prophetic generosity. Then he turned to all of the other companions who he knew wanted to hurt him. And he said, but don't forgive anybody else. Don't forgive anybody else. The Prophet وسلم, looked at him and said, لَقَدْ حَجَّرَتَ شَيْئًا وَاسِعًا Truly you have made a vast thing constricted. The mercy of God, and you restrict that to just me and you. I think that every person engaged in some self serving, other obliterating ideology, philosophy, worldview is guilty of the same thing. Do you restrict dignity and respect for people of your ethnicity, people of your? Social economic class, people of your level of professional standing, people of your geographic location, people of your national, uh, you know, wh wherever your citizenship is based. You are restricting something that is vast. God's creation is vast. Our appreciation for its vastness should be similarly vast. أقول لكم لهذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وبعد. You know, I did my Islamic training at Al Azhar University, and I lived in Cairo for about five years. And one of the most difficult things about my time in Cairo was finding a place to get my hair cut. You're probably looking at my hair, or lack thereof, thinking anybody can do that. But I'm still quite particular about the way it's done. I'm mostly particular about how hygienic the barber is in his practice. Is he cleaning the clippers? Is he changing the razor blades, etc.? So one day I walked into this barbershop. And I'm, I'm observing this barber, and I can tell 
he was really good. You know, he's changing the blades. He's disinfecting the clippers. And I knew that I wanted him to shave my hair. So I started trying to disguise my heavily inflected classical Arabic, right? Because that's the, the medium of instruction in Azhar, with Egyptian Amiya, which I can, I can get around in Amiya. And I tried my best. But after about two minutes, he looked at me and said, enter in fame. Where are you from? And I said to myself, well, the price of this haircut just increased. So I said to him in completely classical Arabic, I said, Khamin, which means you guess. You guess where I'm from. He said, I know where you're from. I said, you do? Where? He said, Senegal. I said, he said, enter Senegali. You're Senegalese. I said, no, nope, I'm not from Senegal. I said, yeah, I'm a sheikh. I'm from somewhere west of Senegal. He looked at me and said, there's something west of Senegal? Right? And then I said, and I'm in America. I'm from America. And he said, America, Chica Bica. Right? And then he got really serious. And he said, if you're from America, Indi Sual Muhim Giddin, I have a very important question for you. He said, Obama, Muslim or Walala? Is he Muslim or not? And I said, Obama, Daragal Masihi. I said, Obama is a Christian man. He said, Well, I can ismu Hussein. His name is Hussein. There's no such thing as a Christian with the name Hussein. And I thought to myself, you're definitely not ready for African-American communities. We have Maliks and Maliks and Jabars and Jabaris not practicing Islam. He said, how did he get that name? I said, I believe his father was born into a Muslim family in Kenya. But even his father, after some time at university, his father became a communist. And then his father became an atheist. And he looked at me and said, He said, Mulhid, atheist. What is an atheist? This man had never heard the term Mulhid. And I explained to him as best I could in my classical Arabic what an atheist was. And he looked at me and he said, are there really people like that in the dunya? Are there really people like that that don't believe in any metaphysical dimension to life? I said, there are really people like that, right? And then he said to me, what do they do when a baby is born? How do they get married? What ayad, what holidays do they celebrate? He could not imagine life without the social cohesion given to life by religious practice. Then I saw, like, this was like a thing. He started looking around. And then he said, Subhanallah, in a very loud voice, Subhanallah, Rabbi Ahsan al Khaliqin. He said, My Lord is the best of creators. And I thought, that's a strange pivot. What caused you to say that? He said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create people and sustain them and bless them with provision and sustenance and they don't even believe in him, my Lord must be alim. And I said, subhanAllah, this simple, seemingly uneducated Egyptian man with just a basic Quranic view of the world could encounter something radically unlike anything he knew, for which he had no analog in his frame of reference. And he could appreciate that as a source of God's diversity in his creative power. That is sophistication. We live in a community that is heterogeneous, it's diverse, and we don't have, and we're not, and we're just talking about Muslims. And we don't have that man's level of appreciation for God's intentional variance in his creation. May God give us that Quranic worldview 
May God help us to see that our diversity is a source of our strength. May God help us to end this silly segregation that goes on in our masajid and in our communities. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya yuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Inna Allah yamur bil adli wa ihsani wa itai dhal qurba. Wa yanha an al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'udhukum la'adhukum tadakkaroon. Udhukur Allah. Remember Allah. Yadhukurukum. He will remember you. Udhuhu. Call upon him. Yastajibalakum. He will respond to you. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we come before you on this blessed day of Jum'ah, begging for your mercy, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we know that we might be the least deserving of your mercy, but we know that we're also most in need of it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen, you have given yourself the name Al Afu. You are the pardoner and you love Afu. Ya Rabbil Alameen, wa'afu anna, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen, if there's any member of our congregation dealing with sickness or infirmity, we ask that you restore their health, Ya Rabbil Alameen. If there's any member of our congregation dealing with depression or sadness, we ask that you allow them to taste felicity in your remembrance, Ya Rabbil Alameen. If there's any member of our congregation dealing with debt or financial insecurity, we ask that you enrich him or her, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen, we pray from the depths of our hearts for our brothers in Turkey and Syria, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The victims of the earthquake and the survivors of the earthquake, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help us to live to our duty to serve them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We are a people in Ni'mah, and they are a people in Ibtila. They have the haq on us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help us to recognize it, and help us to discharge our responsibility toward them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhra da'awana, and alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, wa aqim as-salat.